So more and more people have started calling out the hypocrisy and glaring pro-Israeli biases of Antony Blinken in the Gaza ceasefire talks. Try and cast your mind back to my earlier videos when I repeatedly pointed out that this guy has double standard and extremely unreliable as far as Gaza ceasefire talks are concerned. For nearly two months, Blinken and his minions in the State Department and John Kirby in the White House fooled us, claiming that they were so close to striking the deal on the ceasefire. When they are nowhere close to, nowhere close to achieving a consensus. They had the audacity to repeat these lies even when America was allowing Israel to murder the man Ismail Haniya who was so crucial in securing the release of more than 130 Israeli hostages. That's how serious they have been about these ceasefire talks. As I've said in the past, they are not serious about saving the lives of those hostages. If Blinken was honest and acted without any pro-Israeli biases, Gaza would have seen a lasting ceasefire the day Hamas said it was ready to accept the proposal announced by Joe Biden on 31st of May. Let's not forget that Biden had sold the proposal, that proposal, by calling it an Israeli proposal. I, uh, I want to give an update on my efforts to end the crisis in Gaza. For the past several months, my negotiators of foreign policy, intelligence community and like have been relentlessly focused not just on a ceasefire that would, ever, that would inevitably be fragile and temporary, but on a durable end of the war. That's been the focus, a durable end of this war. One that brings all the hostages home, ensures Israel's security, creates a better day after in Gaza without Hamas in power, and sets the stage for political settlement that provides a better future for Israelis and Palestinians alike. Now, after intensive diplomacy carried out by my team and my many conversations with leaders of Israel, Qatar, and Egypt, and other Middle Eastern countries, Israel has now offered, Israel has offered, a comprehensive new proposal. It's a roadmap to an enduring ceasefire and the release of all hostages. This proposal has been transmitted by Qatar to Hamas. As I argued in one of my earlier videos, if Hamas agreed to accept every single term of that proposal, the Israeli proposal, right? That proposal is essentially Israeli proposal. That's what Americans have told us for last uh, two, nearly three months. Now, if Hamas has already agreed, where was the need to have more and more rounds of ceasefire talks? Unfortunately, no reporters are asking these questions to these morons. Now, Hamas has accused the US of deliberately prolonging the ceasefire talks to allow Israelis to commit more genocide in Gaza. Does Blinken care about his global perception? The fact that he's being viewed as a clown and not a seasoned diplomat? Because if he did, he wouldn't have had the courage to tell reporters yesterday that Benjamin Netanyahu had agreed with the terms of the ceasefire. How does one agree to the terms of something that is supposed to be his own brainchild? At least that's what Biden and Blinken have told us for almost three months. And also, if Benjamin Netanyahu was so serious and honest about ceasefire, why did he not come and join Blinken in the press conference? I'm told Blinken spent more than three hours trying to convince Netanyahu for the ceasefire. And yet, the Blinken has traveled all the way from America to Israel. And war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu can't even extend that much of courtesy to him that he can accompany him to address the media press conference. That's how serious Benjamin Netanyahu is about the ceasefire. And look, the spin that Blinken is giving. Uh, in a very constructive meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today, uh, he confirmed to me that Israel accepts the bridging proposal, uh, that he supports it. It's now incumbent on Hamas to do the same. And then the parties, with the help of the, the mediators, the United States, Egypt, and Qatar, uh, have to come together and complete the process of reaching clear understandings about how they'll implement the commitments that they've made 
under this agreement. But the next important step is for Hamas to say yes, and then in the coming days for all of the expert negotiators to get together to work on uh, clear understandings on impl implementing the agreement. More and more people are now stating exactly the same thing. That is what Daniel Levy had to say about Blinken's lies. Okay, he wasn't being polite and did not use the word lies, but said pretty much everything to that effect. Levy, who is a British-Israeli analyst on the Middle East and has even acted as an Israeli negotiator in the past, not only does he slam Blinken for not being a credible negotiator, he's also making an important point that the failure to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza by Americans means more and more Israeli hostages are perishing now. Because you may have heard today that Israelis had reportedly recovered the bodies of six, six hostages from Khan Yunus area in Gaza. Now I'm told that some of these people who are now dead would have been released if Israelis had accepted the ceasefire talks in the past. Now who is responsible for their deaths. Grim news every day, whether it's mass uh, Palestinian civilian casualties still on a daily basis, whether that's uh, the news that those families have received, uh, whether that's confirmation that the refusal and inability uh, to reach a deal earlier has meant that more of the Israelis being held in Gaza have perished, whether that's the ongoing deterioration in the humanitarian conditions and Palestinians being shunted from one area to another, never a safe zone, even when it's been declared as such. And the, the unedifying continued spectacle of an American diplomatic leadership and secretary of state who simply isn't believed or seen as credible by anyone, as you said, Cassia. Uh, he is messaging uh, quite differently to how the players are messaging. Now, there are, you know, there are in diplomatic efforts, sometimes there's a need for constructive ambiguity. Sometimes as you're getting something over the hill, you'll be saying one thing that the parties can't themselves quite yet say. Sadly, that's not where we are today. Blinken is not only not a credible mediator, he's not an effective one either. And this is an impersonal thing, although he has handled this appallingly at a personal level, but this is institution-wide. Uh, this is the US. So how do we understand this spinning of such an optimistic take despite the fact that it has very little grounding in reality. And that goes to, to the rest of your reporting this morning, Cassia, which is this is a lot about the convention in Chicago and the protesters and the need for the administration to say, hey, it's OK, we've got this. This looks positive. Don't disrupt Chicago. And the other thing is to prevent a right, wider regional. The, the Americans trying to make sure that Israel can continue its provocative military actions, but that there will not be blowback from Iran, and therefore it's deploying its military assets. And this is also highly risky. That's what's going on. Gaza and the appalling situation in Gaza, the hostages, but also, of course, the tens of thousands of dead Palestinians, the hundreds of thousands of displaced and suffering Palestinians, that is coming in a poor third. Didn't I say in one of my earlier videos, had Israelis been serious about their hostages, they wouldn't have flattened Gaza where Hamas has been keeping them captives. That's why I call the current regime of Israel rogue and bunch of war criminals. They don't care about Palestinians, we know that. But they also don't care about their own people. I repeat, it suits war criminal Netanyahu to have this conflict last endlessly so that no one questions his corruption. Meanwhile, Israel has once again bombed a school. There's nothing new about it. It has bombed the Israelis, criminals, Israeli terrorists. They have bombed another school using American bombs, this time killing at least a dozen innocent civilians. That's the brutal reality of this conflict. Thank you so much for your support on buymecoffee.com. Your continued support is absolutely crucial for the future of fearless journalism on this platform. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.